The new Grundstein reform or land tax reform will come into effect in Germany in the year 2025. So if you own a property in Germany, you are legally required to submit a property tax declaration before January 2023. So in this video, we'll go step by step on how to get it done for a private property in Germany using the free online service from Finansamt called Elster. Now, if you don't have an account with Elster yet, you can watch this video to know how to create one. If you are someone new here, my name is Srijit and in this channel, we talk everything about money and personal finance. The first step is to log into your Elster account and find the right form. So for that, go to the section Formulare und Leistungen or Forms and Services and then select all formulae or all forms. Here under the section Grundsteuer, you can see the forms. Now some states have a different form structure compared to the common one, but the basic information should remain same across all. We will select the option Grundsteuer for Andre Bundeslander or the standard model since that would be the one more interesting for the majority. Now on the next page, we can see a list of supported states. We click on Viter and go to the next page. Here we proceed without taking over the data from the tax office records by clicking on Ohne Daten Übername Fort Foreign. Now we need to select the sub forms. Everyone has to fill in the Hop Fort Rook GW1 or the master form containing the basic personal details. Now additionally we need the form Anlage Grundstück or the GW2. The following two forms only apply for special cases like if you own agriculture land or livestock. In our case for a private home ownership this is not applicable. Now we click on Viter and go to the main form Hop Ford Rook. In most cases, you would have received a notification letter from the tax office related to the property tax declaration with a unique reference number. You should enter it here in the section Arctan Saiken without any slashes and then select the finance amp you belong to. This letter will also contain some additional information about the property that can help you with filling out the form. But unfortunately, some of the states don't send this form. But if you have one, then keep it nearby. And if you have yet to receive one, then select the option with the store number or the tax ID. Now we start with the declaration and move on to section Angaben Sur Festellum. We select the option Haupt Festellum or regular assessment. And next step is to mention the plot type, either an empty plot with no buildings, a plot with habitable buildings or agriculture or forest land. Now here we select the common use case that is the plot with a building. Now we go to section 2 on the next page and enter the address of the plot. Here line 8 is only relevant if the plot is big enough to fall under more than one Gemeinde or municipality. The following section or section 3 is to enter further details about the property. We have to add a new entry by clicking on the plus sign. This is a good time to take the letter from tax office and use it as a reference. If you haven't received this letter, don't worry. You can get all this information from the Grundbuch or the land register. Every property is identified by the town it belongs to called the Gemarkung, corridors or flur that divide the town into sections and a plot number or flurstuk. First enter the Grundbuch blot number from the Grundbuch or the letter from the tax office to line 10 section 12. The town or the Gemarkung where the plot is located can be found on the next page in the Grundbuch and should be entered in line 9, field 11. Now enter the floor and the floor stuck in line 10, fields 13, 14 and 15. Floor stuck typically consists of a nominator and a denominator part. If you can't find these details from the Grundbuch or the letter from the tax office, then just leave it empty. In line 11, you can enter the plot ratio owned by you. If you are a single owner or you own with your partner, then enter value 1 in both fields 17 and 18. And if you share the ownership with third parties, then enter those details here from the Grundbuch. And finally, if the entire plot belongs to a single land value zone or board and word, select option 1 from the drop down. We are now done with this section, so click on Übernehmen to save the entry. Now we go to section 4 and enter the property owner's details. If you are a single owner, then select option 0 or Alleine Eigentum ein Naturalischen Person. If it is jointly owned by you and your partner, then you can select option 4, Ehe Garten Lebenspartner. Scroll down and click on Eigentumer Betalikte Inzufügen to create a new entry for the first owner. Now this section should be pretty clear by itself. You have to enter your personal details, your tax identification number and finally how much of the property you own. If you are a single owner, give 1 and 1 in the field 70 and 71. And if you jointly own with your partner, then give 1 and 2. And if that's the case, don't forget to submit your partner details with a new entry. Now save the entry by clicking on the Uber Neyman button. 
Section 5 is to notify regarding eligibility for any tax reductions. And Section 6 is to provide additional information to the tax office. If you have authorized someone else with the power of attorney to represent you in this process, then you can enter the details in Section 7. And if you took help from a tax advisor, the details could be entered in Section 8. Now we are finished with the main form and go to the next one, Anlage Grundstück or GW2. Here we have to enter additional details about the plot and the property. So we go to Section 1, Land Type. I'll just read out the options available. Unbuilt land, single family house, two family house, a residential property for rent, own apartment, partly owned, commercial property, etc. So we select Ein family and house and move on to the next section. Sections two and three need to be only filled if you are eligible for some tax exemptions or reductions. This is rarely the case for a privately owned property and therefore irrelevant. Now we go to section four. Again, if you have the letter from the tax office, that could be helpful here. If not, just refer to your grown book or the property papers. In line four subfield 10, you have to enter the area of the plot that belongs to you. For example, if you own an apartment in a multi-apartment complex, then only enter the plot area that is assigned to you according to the property contract. Now in field 11, you have to enter the board and word or the land value. You can find this from the website www.bordandrishwarte-boris.de. In case sections of your plot belongs to zones with different land values, then you have to add that as a separate entry here. Now go to section 5 and click Gebaude in Sufugen or add a building to provide details of the properties in the plot. We go to subsection 1, Algemeine Angaben. If the building was built before 1949, mark the option in line 8 or else if it was built after 1949, then enter the year of completion in line 8. Remember, this is the year in which the property was ready to be occupied and not when the construction started. If there was a major renovation work done, then enter the year in section 9. But remember that every renovation work is not considered as major and there are some conditions to be fulfilled, like a new roof with insulation or a new exterior with insulation. If there is an obligation to demolish the building in the future, then enter the date when it will be carried out in field 16. You must be very careful with these sections because the data you give here will significantly affect the final tax value. Now we move to the subsection 2. In line 10, field 71, you can enter the number of garages belonging to the property. Again, if you are eligible for some deductions or exemptions, you can enter in the below sections. Now we go to the third subsection. In this section, we have to give details about the actual living and non-living areas. You can find this information either in the sale contract or the building plan from the architect. If there are multiple apartments in the building with different total areas owned and used by you, then you have to enter the information about each unit separately based on the individual unit size. This is again different if one of the unit is rented out. Then the data must be entered in a single section by considering the entire property as a single unit. Again, when you enter this information, you must be very careful about calculating the living space. The total living area is calculated based on certain conditions. For example, if the height of the ceiling is between 1 and 2 meters, then only half of the area is considered as a living area. The lesser the living area you have, the lesser the tax you will have to pay. And for rented properties, there is subsection 4 where you need to give the non-living areas separately. Section 6 and 8 are special cases and they do not apply to a privately owned individual apartment or house. So we are going to skip that. Section 7 is to be filled if the property is jointly owned by many parties and is not entered in the ground book. Once you have entered all the details, you can click the proof and tab on the top to check the form for errors. After correcting the errors, you can go to the tab percent to see the summary of all the details, verify once again and then send it to the tax office. You always have the option to send a new form with additional details or change the existing details as long as the already submitted form is still being processed by the tax office. If you want me to make separate videos on how to do this for each individual state, then let me know in the comments below. And if you think you got some value from this video, then click the like button and think of subscribing to the channel. Until I see you with another video, take care, stay happy and bye.